Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JTO Sullivan. Today, Brock Purdy, the Niners continue to roll. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of the channel. Not only is it a great, cheap way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content. So if you dig this video, the Quarterback School Patreon community really tries to create the environment of what it's like in an NFL quarterback room. All sorts of nuance, depth, detail about not only the quarterback position, but high-level offense and defensive football. Hop over there, become a member. I appreciate your support. The link is in the video description. As for this video, Let's get into it. Brock Purdy, the 49ers continue to roll. Now, to get this thing started, passing game wise, not the fastest start in the world. Got a few different things here. I think early on this third down, you know, for whatever reason, this thing comes out just a tick late. We put 85 in a tough spot, big collision. You know, not something that I'm looking for, that's for sure. If you know, you know. But I just felt like this thing could have came out a little bit quicker. And again, you know, I think it's worth me being explicit before we jump into being critical. The 49ers offense is awesome. <laughs> Definitely probably top two offenses for me to watch just pure enjoyment, scheme, technique, personnel, everything. Okay, so that comes with a grain of salt here when I start to get a little critical. Okay, so don't come at me sideways. The first thing here is this route feels like it's late. So it's third and seven. When he comes out of it, it feels like it's available out of the break. It feels like it's available almost like second window. So it just feels tardy more than anything else. Now, the other thing I would say here is as this thing extends, it feels like the spacing is just funky. Like the end down here to the bottom, these are real tight. You add on the probably my least favorite part of this play is 19 right here. The ball's what? Touching the 27. He runs a three-yard sit route. Now, it's third and seven. The first part here is I'm not familiar with any three-yard sit route like this. If I would have to guess, it's closer to five yards. Now, you're probably saying, dude, you're being really picky. Yeah, no earmuffs. Shit, this is the NFL. The difference between this three yards here is it's almost unthrowable on third and seven. Like, yes, he could catch it, make some miracle guys miss, and go get a first down. And he does that sometimes, no doubt. But it just makes the spacing of it all funky. So it's almost like, you know, a glorified check down right in your face. And it looks like Purdy almost wants to get here. And so the depth of this thing is off for me. You add on the in late, so kind of second window with the in down here, more intermediate in. And it's just, it. I mean, you, you be the judge here of the spacing of this thing. It, it doesn't feel right. So we can say that it's such a great offense in the run game, the play action, the naked keeper, everything. The drop back game occasionally has vibes of this. Okay, so again, the ball is on the 27. 19 runs his route to the 30. Now again, you could throw it to him, and he might make three people miss and get a first down. You could also throw it to Kittle right out the break. For whatever reason, I don't think he's looking at it. It's almost like a tick late up there, and he get a big collision. So again, we're not in their installs. We're not in their meeting. We don't know exactly what they're thinking. We don't know exactly what the details are. We can just kind of watch the film and talk through it. It sure looks like he's trying to hold that thing down the center right there. You know, is he trying to get it to 19? You know, he's certainly open for the three yard sit route. And again, then he gets off to the right and it's a little late. So is he looking at Wagner 54, you know, driving the sit? You know, only they know. Could he catch it? Sure. Tough one. Next one here, second and long. Again, another kind of risky ball over the middle. We're going to work Kittle down here to the bottom and what I'm used to calling a little wrap in or basic. And it just gets a little gnarly. Now, I think 21 is a hell of a player for Seattle. That's the first thing about it. The second thing about it is it feels like this should be there because Wagner comes on the pressure right at the middle. There's a huge void between the hashes, right? Easy to see. But 27 plays that really well, gets his hands on it, you know, potentially a turnover worthy play, but it's also a big collision. You see the safety coming from the other side. 
another big collision on 85. Trying to take the hits off 85. Need him to be in there. But read-wise here, what I'm used to calling a little orbit motion here, going around the quarterback, all right. You know, they're, they're going to have as much motion as damn near anybody coming back around. We're going to work Kittle down here on the basic. It looks like there's with a like a little return or loop right here. And if this is the case, especially when you get Wagner voiding the middle here, blitzing, you're really just kind of worried about 21. You know, he, he can't play both of these. So if he can get his hands on this basic, probably means the ball should go to this loop or return. You know, the other thing to pay attention to is this safety. If he comes down and is a cheater here, you essentially have this one-on-one -on -one up top on the out. And that's really everything you got except down here. So it just felt muddy. Felt a little murky here with some of these decisions, some of the ball placement. You know, just being a little, not that we're afraid to throw in tight windows in San Francisco, but it just felt almost unnecessary. And it felt tough early on. And again, you can see here, you know, if you didn't throw it, to the end, and again, I, I see what it's there, right? 54 leaves, he vacates the area, but the safety rotates in. So if you get caught right there with 21 being able to play both, you just got to play the return to the check down to the bottom. you know. Or you could just say, hey, I really like Ayuk up top on the speed out with that bail technique from the corner. Either way, the film here early on, it wasn't easy. And so to go from what this was early on in the first quarter to what this game became, just a really nice tribute to these guys hanging tough, getting better. Next one here, beautiful spray glance up top to Ayuk. We're going to shift from three by one to two by two. We're going to get some fast motion from McCaffrey. We're going to hit that glance up top. What you really want to pay attention to is here are the safeties. Watch the safety rotation. We're throwing into the safety rotation. Catch middle field closed. We play with great anticipation. No surprise there. Love these in-breakers. When Purdy is on time, in rhythm, getting the ball out, super decisive. Again, the shift, the motion, the movement, great base. Ball location is right up on his face. This is outstanding. So it's a combination of personnel, design, shift, motion. Watch the safeties rotate. So as soon as we get this safety rotation down, and we know we've got middle field closed here, we're getting to the middle of the field, We've got this, what I'm used to calling a spray glance. So spray glance just means that the stem here is not straight. It's a little bit out and in. And it's a really nice job. This is almost universally five no hitch footwork. And we're going to play this with great anticipation. You're welcome. A all over the place with this cat. You know, I'll pause it right when he lets this thing go. One, two, three, four, five. Great. Look at the base. No heel click. Powerful. Separates right there. Not out of the break yet up top. You can see all the space for that glance. Ayuk does a great job of keeping his stride and his speed out of the break. And it's outstanding. So this is it, right? This is the cocktail of what the 49ers do offensively. Personnel, movement, anticipation, precision in the passing game. Beautiful throw. Again, the ball location, y'all. Make it look easy. Right up on his face. Perfect. Strike. Next one is a rough one. Okay, so you got to lock in with this one because this has got some issues for me with what I'm used to calling the, the outcome of this looks like inverted scat Hank. Now, the action from Purdy, and I, from what I hear from people, the kind of broadcast vision of what Shanahan was doing with Ayuk on the sideline makes it seem like there was some miscommunication, to say the least. I would agree with how Purdy is playing this. It looks like he is throwing this with anticipation or trying to throw it and turns it down to the right. So right there, uh, and then kind of reacts. And that's a significant miss for Purdy. So I want to say that I would guess that Ayuk runs the wrong route, especially with, by his reaction and from what people are telling me happened on the broadcast. Now, the what this play is, how it's actually played right here, to me is scat Hank, inverted scat Hank. So I'll draw up scat Hank, normal. That's a sit over the ball and then hook flat, okay? Hook flat. And usually you read this by whoever takes away the sit, that's the side you read the, the hook flat to. Okay, inverted scat Hank to me, it's the same play, especially the sit is the same by the number three, but now the number two runs the hook 
And the number one runs like a little stop or smoke. So smoke. So to me, this is the same exact play. It's just kind of inverting who's who in the zoo, especially if you're going to put running back types out as the number one here. Inverted Hank is a little bit more popular. Now, if I had to guess what this is supposed to be, it sure looks like it's inverted Hank up top. We get the smoke down here, but it looks like Purdy is trying to throw like almost like a short post or follow because the way he plays this and plays this with anticipation or looks like he's trying to play it with anticipation and turns it down here, you would almost universally never play it like that to throw a hook like that. And then again, how he ends up running this with kind of what I would say is kind of like a funky stem out into the hook. Rarely do that as well. And then the miss of where the ball is. So if this is where he runs the actual hook, right? So he comes up eventually up to here. The ball is so far inside. You almost never see Purdy miss like that in this intermediate intermediate window where he is so precise. So, you know, probably something went down. They probably have already made it public in the press conference. I didn't care enough to go back and look at it. But you can see here how just being not on the same page can impact this play. Okay? And any iteration of Hank is not great. But I think the indicators about you know what exactly the problem is is how Purdy kind of turns this thing down. Right there. He's trying to play that with anticipation. He's like, oh no, I it's not doing it. Then the miss is so significant. You can see how pissed Ayuk is pounding the ground. Again, I do love most of the guys in the unit going to try to make a tackle there as well. But man, when everything is so precision-based, any little kind of deviation from what the expectation is can lead to disaster. And that's exactly what happens right here. So turn down. Ah, miss. Interception. Got to go make a tackle. So far from a perfect day, but it starts getting really good really soon. Next one here, beautiful design. Play call, motion, hit this little backside slant in, drift. The linebacker just triggers on the motion. They're locked in, trying to stop the run. Sure looks like power the other way, and it just creates a huge void. So first thing here is the design element of this. This kind of late motion, and what I'm used to calling fly motion, all that means is F to the Y, late, fast motion, so you're going to send him, and then you're going to snap it before he even gets to the center. So then you get that little add-on that you see everyone do to the front side of runs. You're then going to make this thing look like power. We're pulling. We're kicking. We're going downhill here. It's going to create a massive void on the backside because all these guys, you can see his arm already out. They're all trying to get over here and stop the run, stop the run, stop the run. It's then going to create this huge void. Nice patience by IU to get vertical and then into this area for this big void. So great design, motion, play action, to be able to attack the void. Watch those linebackers run. Whoop. I mean, <laughs> even with the safety over the top, it doesn't matter because you come out with a flat angle, protect yourself with the throw, the ball's on the body on the break. It's outstanding. From the back here, you can really see it with the linebacker. Look at the linebacker on the right. His arm is already out. He knows what's coming. He can see 89 looking at Purdy. Watch him come over. I think he's going to make the tackle. Thank you very much. Nice little chunk. Next one here, third and 11. Massive touchdown pass. Just an absolute dot from Purdy. We're going to hit Samuel. He's the number two down here to the bottom. On what I'm used to calling like a beeline post. It sure looks like he's trying to work the hook up top. It might be there, but this is better. <laughs> this is just a thing of beauty. And I know I saw a quick interview of Samuel saying that he didn't think he's going to get this ball, so he's not running 100%. Or 100 miles an hour, you know, different conversation for a different day. This is a hell of a play. Simply outstanding. So third and 11, tough situation down in distance here for any offense. It looks like here we're trying to get this kind of hook here. But where the ball ends up going on what I'm used to calling this B line, because this to me is double post down here to the bottom. This is almost like a straight line post or that inside post. And really what this hap what comes down here is what is this safety up top going to do? I'm used to calling the strong safety. You know, technically he's away from the passing strength. But this player right here, if he's poaching 
Trixine, whatever their terminology is, to not get any depth in hunting up whatever's over here based on what happens right here. To me, that's what creates this opportunity deep down the field. Now, again, just looking at Purdy's feet, it sure looks like he's trying to work the hook. And he just sees this thing, sees this safety sit here with that space. That is outstanding quarterbacking, man. That is world-class vision. Again, he's not afraid to push this thing vertically down the field. That's the difference from other quarterbacks in the system. Not just operating the system, making the system better. Elevating the system. This is elevating the system, y'all. This is a thing of beauty. That hook is there up top. He's looking right at it. Shot. And again, 19 thinks he knows the read, so he's not going to run hard. If you can hear the tone in my voice, you probably know. It doesn't matter, though, right here. Sometimes it just doesn't matter with dudes. Playmaker always makes plays when the ball is in his hands. You live with the rest. You can see here, he's lined up to the left, though, right? We talk about our feet, our drop. Look at that. Lined up to the left. He decides no to the open hook, yes to the touchdown. Don't care about the heel click, strike. <laughs> that is awesome. Next one here, third and two. If you throw a pick on inverted Hank, let's run it again. Now, right here, it works. We end up getting the ball to IU. He's the number two up top on the sit. They use a little sque squeeze formation, shift motion. Again, I, I think you get a little bit fortunate here with how they pressure Bring and Wagner. It creates the void for Ayuk to sit. Again, if you know that's coming, good for you. And that, that's at the end of the day, that's it. The reason it's on this video is as much just for to continue to provide evidence about, hey, so much of this offense is awesome. It really is. There are just so many better plays than this. And I know it gets a first down. Okay, again. Are they fortunate that this guy blitzes and this is the first read? You know, you might think it's great play calling, and maybe it is great play calling. To me, there are just better things in the offense, specifically on third and two, because if you play any type of man, this is going to be really tough. Now, maybe they just know what they're going to get on third and two, but the percentages across the league would tell you you're going to get some type of man or match. This is a, a lot of space. Good for you. Good for them. They got it. I love Purdy's drop. I love the decisiveness. Love getting the ball to 11. All those things can be true. And, and we can call Hank too many times. So it works right here. It's great when it works in week 14. I hope it works in January too. We're all going to find out. Next one here, another beautiful play call. This time we're going to get the ball to Debo. He's up top as the number one. I'm used to calling this a jet sweep down here to the bottom. Love the fact that it's a pass. Okay, now because it's a pass, it comes with all sorts of ramifications for Brock Purdy, who doesn't throw it down the field very much, although he does. He just gets to benefit from having great playmakers around him. So I'm all about it. Let's make it a pass. Ramp up the completion percentage, the yardage. The dude is absolutely electric with, his ball, with the ball in his hands. Outstanding. Now, what do I think the most important part of this play is? Obviously, getting the ball to 19 is it. The second part that we're going to appreciate on this video is, first, the effort right here. Playing without the ball in his hands. Outstanding. The next thing about this, and if you're just a football aficionado, to me, the most important thing about jet fly sweep, so whether it's underneath center, whether it's a pass, whether it's in gun, whatever it is, to me, it's always what are we doing to the edge that we are running to? Are we reaching it? Are we blocking it? Or are we leaving that player? So are we arcing and going to block the next player? What I love that they do here is what I'm used to calling a bluff arc. So we're going to pretend like we're going to hit him. That makes him hesitate just enough that we're then able to get outside him with speed. So technically, we're not blocking this player. But we're also not leaving him too. We're not just going, well, we got it. We're around it with speed. So it's all it's having the full toolkit, y'all. This is detailed, nuanced passing stuff. Watch that edge down here to the bottom. Just that quick little bluff. The thing out. It draws the eyes of 53 and 19's by him. Okay, now watch 23. 
<laughs> watch McCaffrey here sh- carry out that fake. He's still running. That's awesome. And again, I get it. The center of this play is how dynamic Samuel is, no doubt about it. They do a great job of finding different ways to use him, get him the ball. You know, I love the fact that that's a completion. I also love how they handle the edge. Awesome stuff. Next one here, second and 13. Probably my the only time that I think it's probably acceptable to use your favorite play, Hank. They're going to play middle field closed zone. Okay, let's get half back. Just another iteration of it, y'all. This is the first half. We've already run Hank three times. Nice job from Purdy there going away from the near defender. Again, they get to it in a unique way with your little bumper motion down here. <laughs> but this is just Kittle over the ball. And again, the thing that I love is if we're going to do this play, we might as well do it right, I guess, the nicest way to say it. When we run this sit, you don't just throw it at him. You throw it away from the near defender. Okay, Who's the near defender? Right here. The ball should be right there. That's exactly where it is, so that you turn away from the near defender. Protect your guy. Just continues to be bizarre to me that we call this play so much. I just, and maybe they just knew they were getting so much straight, closed zone, but it felt almost like proving a point. Like, I'm, we're just going to keep doing this. I don't care that everybody runs and turns around when we could have big plays down the field. Let's just have static routes. Next one here, third and eight. One of the very few plays in this game where it felt like Purdy was not on the same page with the receiver. So right here, it looks like he expects Samuel to be a little bit either settle in the hole or to kind of make this thing a little flatter. Now, the reason you would want to make this thing a little bit flatter is because of that safety up top. So again, your favorite motion, across, great. Get an empty, but get no empty checks. He's going to run a nothing burger route. The Where the ball's going here is what I'm used to calling a short post or follow. It really, it's just a somewhat of a deeper slant. And the same route is what Ayuk is doing down here, so it's almost mirrored. You're going to get that sit over the ball. But really, all we're trying to do is put this defender in a blender. Now, he gets a little bit wide and gets his hands on. And so it looks like Purdy is kind of trying to keep Samuel flatter. Samuel is trying to get a little bit more vertical. To me here, I would want the flatter at the top just because this safety is going to collision this thing if you take it deep. Now again, you know, only they know the details and nuance of this. Okay, but this is third and eight in the league. Being not on the same page looks like this. So again, I, I think everything is there. You can see the space is there for this thing to hit. They're just not quite on the same page. And again, is it mirrored? Is he supposed to be doing what Ayuk is doing down here to the bottom? You know, either way, you know, those routes are going to be tough versus quarters. But you can see the space there between the mic and the quote unquote like nickel up top or safety to player. I like the idea of the space. It just looks like, and again, this is strictly my opinion. Okay. 19 is not the easiest guy in the world to throw to, especially on these kind of tweener routes like choice, option, you know, short post, follow. You just don't quite, you, you don't quite know where he's going to be. Now, he's going to be open, but that just not being on the same page. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I really do appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me. So thank you for taking the time and doing it. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, you know about it. Join, become a member, get even more Quarterback School content. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics. We have a course on RPOs, tempos, pass protection. The best-selling course is how to beat every coverage. We even have an entire offensive system available for you, so hop over there and enroll. The link is in the video description. We also have a bunch of free resources available. Those are also linked in the video description. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, first and forever again. We're going to eventually shift to empty. We're running double slant down here to the line, to the left, what is in West Coast world, Lion. Now, earlier in the game, I didn't put it in the video, but he hits IU on a nice little gain on an inside slant. 
here it looks like it's there again. Now, again, we're not in the meetings. We're not in the installs. We don't know why the play is called. But if you're playing this play to the left, to me, I think it sure looks like IU should get the ball. Now, again, is it the end of the world? No. Is it ever a bad thing to throw it to McCaffrey? <laughs> Probably not. But, you know, if you're Brandon Ayuk right here, what else do you need to do? Again, look at the bottom, the inside slant. I mean, it's it's certainly more open. And again, we don't know what their read is. I can tell you that universally, this thing is read inside out because this happens first. So one, two. Who's more open? Free access, meaning no bump, potential bump. I mean, it, it, this is a one of those ones where you just turn on the film. Hey, it's still a completion. Yeah, we're getting we're pulling this part thing apart really and trying to analyze it, but I just think it should go to IU. That's it. It's still a nice catch. It's a hell of a catch. Get half back. Love seeing everybody get in there and make it a scrum. But let's make the easy play the easy play. Don't need to throw the contested ball to the running back outside. And again, <laughs> hopefully Ayuk is a really nice guy because these are the ones where you come back to the quarterback and you say, next time throw me the ball. Like, I get who the guy is behind me, but I'm wide open. Next one here, simply outstanding from Brock Purdy. Nothing's there at the start of this thing, and we'll talk about it the next time we watch it. But seven-step drop, er, not there. Get outside the pocket. Use your eyes. Throw an absolute dot to IU for a massive play. This is awesome football from Purdy. So we're playing this thing out to the right. It looks like he's trying to get the deep in. Seven-step drop. No, got to go. And that's a hell of a play. Look at the throw. I mean, out of structure, going to our left, flip our hips, vision, accuracy, massive, massive play. Okay, so now let's talk about what exactly this play is. Okay, the first part to acknowledge is for some reason, we are still doing seven-step drops under center. Okay, that, that, that's the first, if I could make a little red flag, Okay, not red, obviously. Seven-step drop, not for me. The next thing here is the side motion, okay? So when now he's essentially, what, seven yards from the line of scrimmage. The line of scrimmage is the line. So when he has to run this route, and we'll call it a 10-ish yard route, he's running 10 yards but only gaining like three or five in depth. Well, why that matters is because we're running this deep in with it. So the underneath, the second level of the defense. So first level, defensive line. Second level, linebacker types. Third level, safeties. The second level of the defense doesn't care about this 10-yard route from seven yards deep. It takes forever to get there. So it's not getting any stretch on that second level of the defense. So they're able to just get depth, get depth, and get into our lane. So that, again, I, I want to make sure I'm connecting the dots here when I come sideways at this motion. It's it's too deep to impact the play with the seven-step drop. Now, the other part here, because it's a seven-step drop, you're lucky, they're lucky, they're fortunate, to have a really good tight end here who can one-on-one -on -one an NFL edge. That's really good. Now, that's not always going to be the case for some teams. It's also really nice when the right tackle gets spun on and he spins. Okay, And we'll watch that from the back. But again, the first thing you want to do here is just watch McCaffrey's route. Right, He runs 10 yards, but he only runs a two-yard route. So it doesn't pull the linebackers. The linebackers are able to get depth. Now at the top of the drop, seven-step drop. The in, the in might be there up top to Ayuk. But that linebacker is so deep because he doesn't care about McCaffrey. McCaffrey's taking forever to get out there. You know they're worried about McCaffrey. He's a great receiving back. We can't get there. Now we got to go create a play. Now this is outstanding. This is all pretty. 
extend vision, accuracy, playmaking, throwing a ball down the field. Awesome. Okay. Now from the back here, let's watch Kittle, the tight end on the right. Not blocking an edge, blocking a safety. My mistake. Shutting him down though. That's pretty awesome. Now let's watch the right tackle. He's going to get spun. The DN spins, right? So there's your inside move. Greeny style. Now watch the right tackle spin. <laughs> all right. Now all of those moving parts on a seven step drop for an in and a 10 yard, two yard route from McCaffrey. It's just not for me, man, in the drop back game. Purdy overcomes. Purdy played great right here. That's awesome. Next one here. Great job from Brock Purdy. We talk about their keeper world, naked keepers. You got to have a plan for the worst case scenario off the edge. Here's the worst case scenario. You get the DB pressuring you off the backside. 89 is your flat option. A little bang flat. Appreciate the clap to let us know that you're open. Just a great job from Purdy. So again, we I feel like I talk about this multiple times a week. The worst case scenario right here, coming right at the quarterback, coming out of this fake. So we're going to come out here, fake it. You have to have a plan. So we're going to fake this thing, and then you want to get vertical. Almost universally, something is in the flat. Now, right here, they don't have something immediately in the flat. They have what I'm used to calling this bang flat. So you're going to seal the edge and then get off into the flat. Appreciate him clapping right there to let us know that he's open. But I love Purdy not coming out of the fake flat. He gets depth to be able to get away from 33 who's pressuring off the edge. So it's all about this ability coming out of the fake, getting depth, not coming out flat to be able to buy enough time to hit this little bang flat right here. So it's just subtle, nuanced, high-level quarterback play. Coached at a high level, executed at a high level. Whoop! You can see him put his foot in his ground, and he knows exactly what to do. So decisive. Boom! Completion. So go from a disaster sack to a positive gain, all because the quarterback is locked in. Nice fake, decisive, quick. Again, a little clap right here from 89 cracks me up. Whoop. On the body, on the break. Let's go. Next one here, third and six. Again, Purdy the playmaker. So nothing's there. Starting two by two, get to three by one bunch. We're going to escape, leak out to the right, but our eyes are downfield. We're going to find Samuel on the zone, kind of shallow settle up. Now, he makes multiple people miss and almost gets into the end zone. But this is a great job from Purdy. Again, there's no panic. When he goes and leaves the pocket, his eyes stay downfield. He's able to find his guys, playmakers, downfield, back across his body. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. I mean, he could easily run it right there. But let your guys do their job. Right up on his face. Turns into a beautiful little mini chunk in the red area. Almost into the end zone. Just a thing of beauty. These little short passes, this is pretty creating. This isn't scheming people open. This isn't popping guys wide open. This is drop back. There's nothing there. You know, drop back game. There's nothing there. That's a different conversation. But right here, he's got to go. Protect the ball. Eyes downfield. Get a completion. Let your guys do what they do. 19 almost rewards you with a touchdown. So just a really kind of like, you know, when in the grand scheme of the season, even in this game, a nothing completion. But again, just love the fact that he's dipping and ripping that back shoulder. Protect the ball, two hands on it, eyes downfield. Quick, decisive, get it to him. Almost rewarded with a touchdown. Next one here. I thought this was a good decision from Purdy. It looks like he's trying to get the ball to Kittle up top on a little glance or seam. No, gets the ball down to Samuel as kind of the check down. And then 19 just does what he does. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. And I think you at least have to acknowledge it. And I feel like I try to do a decent job of it in every video. Because they have such great weapons on the perimeter, it's almost like it's a hindrance or a, a reason to not appreciate Purdy's game. He does a great job getting into the check down. They have a great scheme that has a dynamic wide receiver in the backfield as the check down. Well, let's use it. It's not a penalty for throwing it to him. It's, it's their fault for not playing tighter defense to make life more difficult for Purdy. He says no. Great timing to the check down. And then from here, okay, where you throw that throw, essentially at the line of scrimmage, to a big chunk, okay, that's 19. 
That's the system. That's the personnel. It can be all of the above. It can be a nice, simple quarterback read, a good decision to not force it to Kittle. No check down. Okay. And then the acceleration, punt return left. That's awesome. Next one here, touchdown. I love it. If you know, you know, Kittle up top, a little get by him. Safety's way out of their water. Way too easy. Beautiful play call. Again, you're pulling the guard. You've got the long trap action. This thing looks like power. Looks like that fly motion we saw earlier. Nice touch. Again, I think the thing that popped for me with Purdy in this film, okay, besides for the fact that that is a great play call, great design, what I thought popped for the Purdy film for me was he showcased all the throws. So right here, a little slip by this DB, tries to hold him, tackle him. This is not an easy throw. You've got to show some touch. You've got to get it up and down. It's a perfect strike, but it's not a laser, right? And it's not like a moon ball. So it's got to be like that kind of like perfect mid iron, put it right next to the stick. This thing is outstanding. I just love the touch of it, the base. The accuracy allows Kittle to finish this thing. He doesn't have to make any crazy circus catches, the precision to it. And okay, acknowledge the motion looks like the run game. Got the fullback going. We got the guard going. See that horizontal action, all this horizontal action with McCaffrey. Brings those linebacker safeties up. Watch Kittle on the left. Whoop. Slip right by him. 20 tries to choke him. And the ball's perfect. <laughs> it's just, it's awesome offense, man, more than anything else. It's great quarterbacking. It's weapons all over the place. It's just so much fun to watch. It really is. Next one here. I really like the design of this play. We kind of boot away, throw it to Ayuk coming towards us on the bottom. Now, I thought their corner down here to the bottom made a really nice play. The ball kind of is a little bit behind him, but it's a good thing. Obviously, you want to hold on to the ball there, Captain. But I think this shows a few different things. First of all, I love the boot action away. Okay, so we're going to go to your left, flip your hips to the right. Ball's right on his chest. I will just say, okay, and I feel like I've pointed this out now, maybe back-to-back -back weeks, if not kind of a couple videos this year. For whatever reason, I feel like one of the throws that Purdy just for whatever reason doesn't quite see or want to throw is this kind of deep flag or pylon. So, so this Kittle's going to set this thing to the back. I'm going to call this more of an over or an in. Okay, my favorite part about this play is we're faking to the right. So we come out here, sell this thing. We boot to the left, but we flip our hips to come back and throw this thing over here. So it's pretty rare to fake this way and then throw back, have all the routes come in this way. Normally it would be the opposite where you'd want to fake to the left and boot towards it so that you have all these routes coming to you. But it really disorients a defense because they're used to roboting and looking up, hunt, uh, looking up overs going to the side that you're booting to. So if you boot this way, the defense is thinking, oh, the routes are coming out th that way as well. So this kind of goes against their rules, which I love when Shanahan does. My only thing here is if you want to truly, truly separate this cat and to go to where he probably deserves to go with his performance, this is the throw. Okay. It's just, it's my opinion, hey, but it's my channel. So deal with it. <laughs> That's the throw I want to see. That's the throw that shuts everybody up. Throw it. Now, it's easy to say throw it when you know that the corner is going to come off and try to hit this thing. But this is the throw. The deep down the field shot out of this, not out of the out of structure play where he uses his kind of playmaking ability. The in structure bomb deep down the field. That's it. Okay? It's still a great play. But that's the one I would love to see throw because I think it's a touchdown. I bet he can make the play too, just for whatever reason, isn't right here and hasn't the last few weeks. It's still a great play, okay? So don't come sideways at me. But we can acknowledge it's been available on the film. The film is the film. It's great design. Again, the boot away, flip your hips, chuck it. 
he everybody knows he throws darts on these intermediate routes. Now, this one's a dangerous one and could be a big collision there. It's a hell of a catch. Nice job kind of protecting him. But my goodness, the one throw. That's the one throw down the field I would love to see. Next one here, third and 11. We're going to rip the slants up top. Again, to me, this is lying up top. Slant, slant. Now, I almost thought that we were going to get the banana split here. One of my favorite plays from way back in the day. And I'll talk about it from the wide. But this is a great job. Debo, doing Debo things. Get the ball in his hands. Let him yak. Penalty helps as well. But man, I thought this was almost going to be special, special here watching the All-22. So first off, here's the double slant. Already talked about it a few times. Great job just getting it to him, letting him do what he does, go get a first down. Now the banana split element of this to me is we do double slant. And it's almost more of an in when it happens here, coming across. Kittle, the extra protector, getting their six-person protection a little unique way, keeping the tight end in here. His check is not like a normal check sit. His check would be like check, and then he's coming back across. And we're trying to get this action right here. Kelsey would be all about this, where you lateral it right here, and then this thing is out the gate the other way. You're welcome if you guys want to put it in. Someone's going to put it in. Thing works beautifully right here. Would have been a massive hit either way. This is third and 11, first down. You can see there, Kittle just keeps going flatter. Nice little toss out the back door. But man, that is beautiful. It's pretty special when you can throw slants. I love slants on third and long just for this reason. Because you're going towards your end zone. You put it on him. You make one guy miss, fall forward. You got a chance for a first down. Next one here, third and seven. This is the same play that they hit Samuel on the touchdown for earlier in the game. This time they are working the hook to the bottom. I think the hook is there. I think maybe 15 rounds this thing a little bit coming out of it. I would love to see him come a little bit harder right back to Purdy. But I feel like Purdy does everything right here. And again, you can see the route from Samuel being the same. They're running that double post up top with your favorite motion. You can see that same route and wonder why he's jogging because this is probably what it looked like all week at practice. Third and forever. Get this opportunity. Here's that hook. Here's that beeline or inside post that hit the touchdown earlier. Here's that big nod post over the top. Little bumper action out here for you. Kittle checking and into the flat. And when I'm saying the top of this route is it's not easy to do, okay? You hit this right here and you come right back to the quarterback as opposed to any sort of little round action allows this corner to really drive this thing hard straight back. So just that little bit at the top of the route, again, you might be thinking I might be being too critical, but to me here, he just rounds that thing a tick coming out of it right at the top as opposed to 30 who's coming straight downhill. And again, watch Debo up top. That's that same route. Ayuk is on that same post. So love going back to the well. Excellent pass protection here as well. One of those ones where, man, you'd love to hook that up for third and seven because that's there for the taking. Hits the guy in the hands. We just can't hook it up. Easy to see. Right on him. Again, really nice ball location. Just keep coming. Again, you can see him play with anticipation, right? He's throwing that thing right there. 15's not out of the break yet. Come right back to the ball. And maybe the DB makes a nice play too. They get paid too. Another third and seven here. This time we're going to hit Kittle on a little deep outer corner. I thought their safeties got exposed a number of times in this game. You know, whether this is Rip Liz or three backer, that's just way too much space. That's way too easy on third, and we're going to close out the game here. You know, who knows what six is doing to the left. But this is a great job from Purdy being able to see it. A little high, low to our left. Again, lined up to the left. Great base. Hit that back foot. Ball is perfectly thrown. Making guys miss. Love to see that reception from my guy 8-5. If you know, you know. But I mean, hard to make sense here of what they're doing on the back end. So concept-wise here, we're just running out like a little banana out with a little return loop coming on the backside, probably a must outside release go. And it sure looks like everybody else is matching up here. Like we're, we've got some, some tighter coverage except for right here. 
He looks like he's just playing like three backer, just like hanging in that hook to curl area and Kittle runs right by him. So either a miscommunication, too much space, not good enough. Regardless, really nice from Purdy and Kittle. Beautiful job. Nice touch. Again, the part that jumped off the film for me was all the clubs. Damn near all the clubs. Everything except that final, final driver that I talked about already. But man, this is beautiful touch. As good as anyone in the game right now at these intermediate throws. Just locked in precision, big chunk, closing out this game. Hell yes. So that is a wrap. Brock Purdy, the Niners, rolling. Off to a bit of a slow start in this one as far as passing game-wise, but turned it up really quickly. Thought Brock Purdy really just continues to showcase everything that he brings to the table. Uh, can play in structure with great anticipation, precision, surgical, in the intermediate to underneath stuff. Love what they do in the play-action stuff. You couple that with his ability to create, play, make, and throw with touch. Damn near doing everything that's required to be an elite top-tier guy. I continue to think and try to point out elements where I feel like he potentially could continue to surge. And eventually, if he ever decides to let it rip deep, deep down the field, on time, in structure, on that deep flag pylon type of throw, I think that's damn near the only thing that's missing as far as a club that you see consistently. I'm not saying he doesn't throw it down the field because he does, but it's that big, big driver off the tee box, that type of throw that you turn on the film and you say, you know, golly, another week where maybe you could let that thing rip. It doesn't mean that it's a disqualifier, that he's not an elite type top tier guy. It's just the film is the film and you continue to see it as a potential for whatever reason not being thrown. You couple that with maybe some of the drop back game deficiencies compared to other elements of the offense that are awesome, outstanding, continue to be the offensive architecture and structure related to the personnel, the movement, the shift, the motions, the play action, the moving the launch point, the run game, the effort in the run game, the effort all over the place. It's awesome. I really, really do love watching this offense. I think it's this in Miami are neck and neck as far as my favorite football to watch. So much so that we're going to put a little uh, extra clips here on the end as far as little things that didn't make necessarily the Purdy video, but I just love the football. It is that much fun for me to watch. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. Enjoy the little extras, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one. Now some bonus footage just because I like this offense so much. First play of the game, massive run. We'll toss down here to the bottom. Things to pay attention to. Ayuk's block. Okay. The backside convoy block, as good as you'll ever see. And you can really tell because he keeps engaging. Look at the effort. Watch McCaffrey's reaction after this. He points right to him. He knows. The block happened right in front of his face. Look at him. You. You, 11. And 11's going crazy. Okay, so I legitimately love when guys appreciate effort of their teammates. Okay, now, <laughs> in addition, just watch 71, the left tackle. Look at the hole he creates. I mean, that is a awesome block. Look at the hole. Now, this block from Ayuk as well, great effort. 21, great effort from the Seahawks. 53, great effort from the Seahawks. Look who picks up McCaffrey, y'all. Look who picks up McCaffrey. Where's everybody else on the screen? 13's picking him up. Now, watch McCaffrey's reaction. <laughs> He's pointing to Ayuk. He knows. He saw the block. He saw the effort. It's awesome. So watching Ayuk at the top, the convoy block, the kind of thankless backside, got a seal in case it pops, you're responsible. Oh, here it comes. Okay, you blocked him right there. You don't give up. Go get him again. We got to cut it back. Another great block. That's awesome. And then Purdy picks him up. Plus McCaffrey just appreciating the block from Ayuk, the emotion from 11. Just, I straight up love to see it. Also, for fun here, pay attention to the right defensive end, 53. He's on the backside, right? He's unblocked right inside Ayuk. He's the guy who makes the tackle. So there's great effort all over the place. I love seeing this type of effort on an NFL field, any field. Look at 53, backside left. He's not giving up. Nice job making him cut back 21 and then finish it right there. 13 picks him up, and he loves it. What a play.
My goodness. Next one here. I put this one on here just because I think this showcase is uh, one of Kyle's strengths. You know, he's a wide receiver at heart, whether he wants to admit it or not, probably. This is right after Debo got him down there to the one. You go right back to him. Let him get the touchdown. I love it. Now, again, talked about it earlier in the video about the jet sweep, how they handle the edge. Okay, so we shift, then we motion. Now you're down here in the tight red area. Okay, so what are we going to do at the edge? Do we block it? Do we reach it? How do we want to handle this? In the field, I, we talked about the bluff arc. Right here, we're just going to reach this thing. So you put 85 and 71, hell yes. Reach, reach, and then let 19 do his thing. The only thing I would add, if I was this guy, I'd want to be in gun and flip it to him so I get the pass. We threw it down to the inside the one, too. Come on, Kyle. Look your boy up. But I love it. You can tell here. This is intentional play calling. Get the guy who got down there the touchdown. Your guys appreciate it. The team appreciates it. Running behind 71 is always a good idea. <laughs> Look at that reach. <laughs> Just one paw. Just go ahead and stay right there, guy. Blocks two. Fucking A, man. 71 is a dude. One-hand paw, double team, walk in. And then finally, the last one, put this one in here. This is a drop to Debo up top on a little quick screen, now screen. I just want you to watch McCaffrey's effort down here to the bottom. Now, I know it's become a thing now to point out off-ball effort. <laughs> he's, I guarantee he's screaming for the ball too. So double mailbox, run away from it. He's now made it a thing. It will translate through all levels of football. This kind of effort is outstanding for McCaffrey. Look at it. <laughs> you don't see anybody else do this. That is world-class effort. I absolutely love it. One more time from the wide to appreciate how it impacts the play. He's not even close to the play. Look at the fucking effort, man. It's a thing of beauty. It's contagious to a team. It's awesome.